Now, let's challenge ourselves a bit more by going with bodies or problems that involve two moving bodies. Okay? This one now requires extreme visualization. But one way we could do the visualization bit would be to sketch the problem. Okay? Once we sketch, we should be able to visualize, okay, this is going this way, this is going that way, and therefore, we can make our solution. So let's try it. Phil, a striker, is taking a free kick against Neil, a goalkeeper. Phil placed the ball a distance of 30 meters from the goal and took aim for the corner of the goal. With the ball initially at rest, he kicked it to a final velocity of 25 meters per second. Neil took 0.50 seconds to react before he dove towards the ball at a constant speed of 2 meters per second. If Neil's initial position was 3 meters from the corner of the goal, did he make it in time to save Phil's shot? Justify your answer with a mathematical solution. So a classic proving problem. But this time, unlike the other one, we have two bodies moving in different directions. So let's do it first. So before we go to Gressa, one thing we could do to visualize is to simply sketch the problem. So let's put the striker here, Phil. Neil, the goalkeeper, goes there. Okay. Phil takes a shot going towards the corner of the goal. So let's see if we can draw a goal over here. Okay, goal. Let's pretend that this is the goal. Takes a shot towards the corner. You know that the shot started out at rest because it's a free kick, and it ended with a final velocity of 25 meters per second. You know that the shot was taken 30 meters from the goal. Now let's see. Neil took 0.50 seconds to react before he dove towards the ball at a constant speed. So we know that it's a constant speed, therefore VI is equal to VF, which is equal to 2 meters per second. This also tells us that the acceleration is zero because it's a constant speed. Okay? And you know that Neil is also 3 meters from the corner of the goal because that's the uh, width of the goal post. So now we have to determine if did he make it in time. Okay? So what are we given here? Well, in this kind of problem where there are two bodies, it is very useful to separate it by the two bodies involved. So we have Neil and Phil. Okay, so let's take a look. So Neil, for Neil, we know that we have the delta x of Neil. He has to travel the three meter width of the goal. We also know that he travels at a constant rate of two meters per second, okay? And we know that we don't have the time. We're looking if, what is Neil's time, okay? But there's also another catch. It took him 0.50 seconds to react. So we know that Neil's time is going to be the time that we solve plus 0 0.50 seconds, okay? Furthermore, let's go to Phil. So for Phil, we have um, a VI of zero. We have a VF of 25 meters per second. Okay, we know that the delta X is 30 meters. Okay, and we're now looking for the time of Phil. And this is what we're going to compare. We are required to see if Neil makes it to save the shot. So if the goalkeeper saves the shot, he should be able to make it to the corner of the goal before the ball does. Okay? So the time of Neil must be less than Phil in order to prove that it works. So now let's check. What equation can we use for this case? Well, in this equation, delta x, v, i, n, t, and we also know that acceleration is zero. For Neil, we can use the equation delta x is equal to v, i, t plus one half a t squared, but with the knowledge that acceleration is zero, therefore, it's simply v i t. For fill, we can use, we have v i, we have v f, delta x, time of fill, okay? So let's take a look. We can use delta x, v i t, or sorry, v i plus v f divided by two times time. Okay, and we're going to compare the two times and make sure and check which one is faster. Okay, now let's solve. Let me just allot some space for this. Okay, 
So let's first solve nil because the equation looks a little bit simpler. So for nil, delta x is equal to vit. And with a bit of rearranging, we can get that delta x over vi is equal to t. Okay? We know that nil has to travel 3 meters. And we know that he will start at an initial velocity and maintain that initial velocity of 2.0 meters per second. Okay? And this is all going to be equal to time. So let's get my calculator. 3 divided by 2 is simply 1.5 seconds. So that gives us t is equal to 1.5 seconds. However, if we want to get Neil's time, remember he reacts late. Okay, goalkeepers don't uh, don't have superhuman reflexes that allow them to just go and get there. They have to have human reaction time. So we have to add this time to 0.50 seconds, okay, to get Neil's actual time. So 1.5 plus 0.50 is simply 2.0 seconds. Remember, sig fix. So this is Neil's time. Now that we did Neil, let's try Phil. So for Phil, we have delta x is equal to vi plus vf over 2 multiplied to the time. Okay? So let's see. What, what is our delta x? Our delta x is 30 meters from the goal. Okay? Our vi... What's VI? VI would be 0. Our VF, 25, divided by 2, multiply it to the time. Now, we can use algebra, but I'll teach you a different technique by which we can solve this by simply plugging in the equation. Okay, so we go 30. Alpha equals, that presents an equal sign in your calculator, so it's going to be 0 plus 25 on the top as we have determined, divided by 2 times, let's set a variable, let's say x. Okay, so that's the equation we're dealing with. So now, in order to solve for x, we just say press shift and then solve. Okay, then we press the equal sign at the bottom, and there you go. x is simply 2.4. But here it's t, so we can solve that t of fill, 2.4 seconds. Now let's check. The goalkeeper gets there in 2 seconds. The ball struck by Phil gets there in 2.4 seconds. So who is faster in this case? Well, it's obvious that the goalkeeper wins because it's much slower. Therefore, final answer, Neil saves the 